Hi, this is a continuation of my Apache Spark series of videos on data engineering and data analysis. So in the previous video, I gave an overview of Apache Spark. I walked through the Spark internal architecture. Um, uh, we discussed on why Spark. I also like walked through the life cycle of data engineering. Uh, basically, data life, uh, data engineering life cycle consists of uh, data collection, collecting data from multiple source system, and then uh, basically analyzing the data, cleaning the data, organizing the data, and then transforming the data, and finally storing the data so that downstream uh, applications like machine learning or visualization or advanced analytics or any other downstream application can use the data to generate insights. Right. Uh, if you have not seen my previous video, you can click the link on the top and then you can uh, watch, uh, the, we, uh, watch the video. Uh, but that is not a prerequisite for this, but it's good to know Spark internal architecture. Um, uh, as, as you, when you are running in production, you need to understand how Spark works. That will help you create a pretty scalable and reliable uh, pipelines. Right? So let's get started with this particular video, which is purely focused on data analysis and data cleaning as part of the data engineering lifecycle. In the next video, we will talk about exploratory data analysis and then we will go into the real data engineering work like doing data transformations and all. Uh, but this is more on uh, data cleaning and data analysis. For this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Databricks Community Edition. Uh, I have a separate video if you have not used Databricks before. Uh, I have a separate video where you can uh, go and uh, which talks about going and creating an account, a free account in Databricks to practice Spark. If you have not seen the video, you can click the link on the top. You can watch the video. You can uh, open an account in Databricks community so that you, as the video is going on, you can play around and you can run it by yourself and see the output. Right. So. Uh, let's get started with this particular part. For this particular notebook, I'm going to use the Lending Club uh, data set. So Lending Club is a peer-to-peer -peer lending company. Uh, the data set is available in Kaggle. In Kaggle, you can search for Lending Club. Uh, you can download it. Uh, so what, what this company does, the background of the company is they are into peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending. Uh, they provide personal loans. They provide small business loan. Uh, they also provide auto refinancing. So when they would say peer to peer, basically there will be a set of uh, borrowers who want money and they may not have maybe a good credit history and they want quick money. They can come into lending club and say, okay, I want a loan for uh, $20,000. And there may be a set of borrowers who may view the, view the borrower profile. Uh, there may be a set of investors who may view the borrower for profile. And uh, maybe if they feel the risk profile is comfortable, they may invest on the loan. And that's how the financing happens. And after that, the customer pays an equi a monthly installment on the loan uh, along with the interest charges. Uh, it, the, in this case, the interest rates are typically higher than the regular bank. Uh, as this, there may be a lot of high risky customers. Right. So that's what uh, Lending Club is about. And what I've done is I've taken one quarter of data. Uh, the reason is the, I just want to the notebook to run uh, pretty fast. I don't we don't want to wait and watch uh, uh, the processing happening. At the same time, uh, understand the fundamentals of Spark and how Spark can be used for data cleaning. So I, uh, this is one quarter of data set. This data set is pretty big enough to do a lot of analysis and pretty good enough as well. Uh, the, it's a CSV file. So it's a delimiter is comma. Uh, I have get, kept infer schema is equal to true. You can provide your schema as well. But in this case, uh, what I am asking Spark is uh, go and uh, find out the schema for me. And the first row is header is basically uh, telling that, okay, uh, the very first row has all the column names. Use that as use that metadata as column information. That's what like uh, basically the first row is at the telling. So basically what I'm doing is I am assigning to a DF object, a data frame object. It is, we are calling the Spark read format. The file type is again CSV. We are setting info schema. We are setting header with the, the delimiter is comma and then the file location, which is on the top. And finally, I am displaying the data frame to just, just to quickly see how the data is. So let me run the cell. This may take uh, a few few seconds. Yeah, that's it. So now you can see the output. The top it has taken the header as the column names, and there are around 145 columns in this particular uh, particular data set. Now 
uh, if you see uh, the uh, there's a loan amount column, there's a funded amount column. Um, there is a term whether the uh, whether the loan is for 36 months or 60 months. Basically, lending club gives short term loans, and uh, I think the loan is maximum up to forty thousand dollars. They don't give loan above that. The interest rate, if you really see, is pretty high. Uh, um, compared maybe it's higher than the bank and it also depends on the borrower profile not only uh, it's high because it's lending club it also depends on the borrower profile the borrower profile is more risky the interest rate may be higher right so uh, the term and term if you really see is an integer but they have added months to it and this requires cleaning because if you are planning to feed it to a downstream machine learning model you have to make it numeric right so this is one you the, the percentage symbol will also uh, see if it's going to consider this as a string not as an uh, float or double the reason is as a percentage symbol similarly there are other variables like grade of the loan grade is an internal grade that lending club assigns a grade b grade they assign up to i think f or g grade and then there are other uh, columns as well what is the employment length again employment length is a numeric but here because uh, there's a less than symbol year symbol plus symbol we have to clean the data the there's a home ownership data whether that particular borrower owns a home or mortgaged a home or is living in a rent uh, there are there are a lot of variables and the main variable here is loan status so what this tells, tells is what is the current loan status of the borrower is the borrower uh, current that means he is paying all his uh, monthly installments properly is the borrower delayed that may that is maybe a multiple delayed period uh, 30 to 60 days 60 to 90 days delay so he has already delayed his payment and finally the, the as the customer charged off the charged off means the money is typically uh, it's in the final stage the company the money is not recoverable or it has to go to the collections to go and collect the money right so this these are different variables i'm not going to use all the 145 variables i'm going to use a subset i will i will talk about some of the variables when we go to that stage and what i can do now i have the df object i can just run a df dot count and the count will give me give me how many rows are there there are around 128k rows in this particular data set and let me print the schema i said infer schema i have not given schema so what it will do is it will run across the columns and try to uh, get a decent enough schema for it so the loan amount is an integer the fund and amount is an integer the term which we saw 36 or 60 months because the months is there it's a string the interest rate is again a numeric but there's a percentage symbol those as a string so this is all something we have to clean right the employment length is also like says like one year two year so that's why it's a string so these are all you see like how to go ahead and clean it. Uh, so this is uh, this is how we see the schema. It's very important you check the schema. Uh, the reason is like you may finally if you are uh, specifically developing a machine learning model you may want to convert it everything into numeric. So you may have to do a lot of data cleaning or feature engineering or something like that. But if it's you are just showing it as a visualization report or a dashboard or something like that you may you can keep the data type as it is right what i can do is i can also create a temporary table out of this particular data frame so in this case what i am doing is i am there are two ways you can access a data frame you have a lot of data frame functions the spark data frame is very similar to pandas data frame so there are a lot of functions which are common but spark data frame is distributable right you, you what it does is it takes the uh, data frame the data set may be one terabyte and it chunks the data frame into multiple worker nodes and then runs it uh, in a distributed mode but pandas is more memory dependent it runs on a single node so it so you can only load the data set that uh, a single memory uh, allows and also the computation on large data set in pandas will be very expensive but spark it can have the compute of uh, its distributed node and then merge the results right so that is data frame is one way of accessing it the second way of accessing it is a typical you can use sql if you are comfortable with sql you can do a lot of functions in sql in uh, spark in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a temporary table here so this temporary table uh, what will happen once you create the temporary table you can use this loan stats and just fire regular sql queries so let me first create this temporary table uh, in this video i'm going to use a lot of data frame functions because data frame is more flexible when you want to add columns remove columns and do some analysis then sql sql also is pretty good uh, but data frame has more functions which uh, you can you can use it and then you can uh, create a final uh, clean data set 
while you can do it in SQL as well. I'm going to use both, but mostly focus on data frame functions here. So now this is created. I can just go and uh, run the cell with a regular SQL command. You can see a select star from loan stats. It's just going to run and you are seeing the same results that you saw in the data frame uh, dot show function on the top, right? And the only thing is when you're running a SQL in Databricks, you need to do a percentage SQL on top uh, because this is a single notebook that uh, supports multiple languages. The default language is Python. Uh, but, but if you want to run any other language, you have to kind of uh, add an, a magic command over here so that you can run it. So now you can also uh, do a lot of joins in SQL. You can do aggregation function. Uh, let me just run, do a do a count of star. We did a df dot count over there, and here we are doing just like select count of star from loan stats. So it's a pretty good tool because it's SQL, and a lot of people who know SQL can use it. Now let me quickly generate the summary statistics of this particular data set. There are 145 columns over there, right? I want to know uh, the, a quick descriptive statistics, like what is the min, median, uh, max of that every column, right? So what I can do is I am doing a data frame dot describe and then I'm doing a show over here. So let me run this. So data frame dot describe is basically a transformation that tell, okay, generate statistic show is an action command. In the previous video, I spoke about spark. I said spark is a lazy evaluation framework. It creates a DAG. And then when an action command comes in, it executes the DAG so that it can optimize the DAG to be executed in a distributed mode. So that's what here. So show is an action command. It's showing the output, but if you really see the output is not really readable. The reason is it has 145 columns. If you come down, uh, it's just throwing uh, garbage. It's very difficult to uh, interpret the results over here. So I'm what I'm going to do further is I'm going to limit my data frame. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a data frame dot select and selecting very specific columns and then assigning it to another data frame df underscore cell the df underscore select. So I am taking some of the key variables that contribute to the outcome and the, where we can do a lot of data cleaning and data analysis for this particular case. So these are some of the columns. If you see uh, the term I have selected, whether this particular loan is uh, 36 months or 60 months, home ownership of the person, whether he owns a home, whether he lives in rent or he has mortgage, what is the grade, whether it's a A grade loan, B grade loan, this is an internal category, we don't have much details on it. What is the purpose of the loan? Whether uh, when, when you are when 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 you take a, lo a loan from lending club, you can give the purpose whether you want to do debt consolidation. You may have three debts. You may want to merge into one debt, or you may have credit card balance which you want to kind of close. We so you are taking a loan. There are multiple purpose. The interest rate that the customer is playing, the state where the customer is there, the loan status. What is the status of the loan? This is the variable that tells whether the loan is running current or the borrower has delayed the loan. If the borrower has delayed the loan, uh, as he delayed by 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, or it's charged off. Charged off means basically uh, the lender feels that this loan is not recoverable or it has to go to a collection agency. Right. So that is uh, that is a loan status variable. There are other columns as well. Uh, loan type, uh, loan amount. Um, there is a DTI column, which is a debt to income ratio. What is the debt that customer has, has and what total debt the customer has? Not only on this one, but he may have 10 different uh, debt. So what is the debt to income ratio? This is a very key variable in uh, any financing uh, to see like how whether the borrower is, will he has the ability to really pay. If he is, uh, if his kind of uh, uh, debt is very close to his income, then by default, the, uh, the customer have his personal need as well and he will default. Right. So there are a lot of other variables as well. Some of the variable I will discuss as I go into the detail of it. So let me do one thing. Let me quickly take the selected data frame and run it. So it has only few columns. Now, if you really see the output here, it does not show anything. It just says it has created a data frame and it has like 15 more fields plus this 16 fields. The reason is uh, this is we are just run a transformation command. We are not run an action command over here. So when we say show, it triggers off uh, the result and shows the output. Now, even with this column, uh, the output is better than before, but not great. You can see there's a mean standard deviation, min, max and all, but it's still not great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and further limit the column. Uh, let me uh, run the cell. Even this is not going to uh, give this better. Uh, but again, like this is still not great. I'm able to see the annual income uh, basically uh, what do you call like um, 12, 8, 4, 1, 2, 
uh, is the count of records and then the mean value is 88 uh, 827 80 82k sorry and then the standard deviation is 108k but still it's not like that accessible so what i'm going to do here is i am going to uh, cache the data set uh, over here cache is what i'm telling is load this particular data set into uh, into the executor memory the executor memory will have cache so basically you're loading it into a local data set so that it can process fast so and then what i'm going to i'm selecting even less columns so that i can see the output properly now if you see over here these are some of the columns I've taken. So now you can see the summary. That's a count, mean, standard deviation, min and max. And uh, if you see the employee length, basically it's showing null. The reason is employee length, it has treated as an uh, string value. And uh, if you see like minimum is one year, uh, so it's not showing it properly. The debt to income ratio, if you really see that is 19 is the mean and 20 is the standard deviation. Even if you calculate for two standard deviation, that is like 20 plus 20, 40 and 19, 59. Uh, there are the maximum is 999. So there are quite a good number of outliers, right? Let's see like how we can handle this outliers. There is a, a delinquency two years column, uh, which seems real, okay. Like it's still like the outliers, but it still uh, seems okay. Now, that is an revolve uh, that is kind of an what is the revolving utilization right now this utilization is basically uh, telling like how much the loan was offered how much the customer has utilized so this is again like they treated as string that's why you all can see null here because that person gets symbol so we have to clean all this to make it numeric so that we can get a proper statistics right so now this is, this is the variables you are going to work on let's get started now you can as i said you can interchangeably use sql as well so i'm going to quickly check the employee length variable and i'm going to take the first 50 records now if you really see the employee length is basically your five years nine years your null data as well then your one year there are the, there are like a lot of uh, even though it's a numeric value you can see like because the years is added streaking as string so i need to strip off this particular uh this particular string variable and only keep numeric now for this there are two ways you can do it so what i'm doing is there are pyspark sql sql functions that's a regex replace and regex extract i'm going to show both way of doing it in the regex replace what i'm doing is i'm create taking a creating a regex string this is the string i want to find and replace and i have kept years year plus and less than if you see on the top these are the different variables you are your plus you are less than your years and year right so uh, here i you are less than here so what i'm going is i'm taking this string over here and then i am in the data frame underscore cell which is the selected data frame that we have i am basically calling a regex replace function i am telling the column name is employment uh, length i am giving the regex string which is on the top and then i'm telling replace this regex string with an uh, just empty character right and if you see the output now quickly once i run this you can see basically all this particular values have cleaned up right you still have na but na is something we have to handle uh, in a different way right so this is one way of doing it yeah the other way of doing it you can also use as of now the df cell i've not assigned it to df cell i'm just seeing the output uh, let me tell you how to assign to the df cell uh, once you have transformed the column you want to put it back into the data frame right i will come to that but the other way of doing it is what i'm doing is i'm creating a dead uh, regex string and telling only have decimal characters only have digits right uh, re re remove all the co uh, other columns and that's where i can use the regex, regex extract in the extract what i am telling is uh, just extract all the digits out and that's what i need so this is the other way of doing it you can use lot of regex function over here and um, you know you see you get the same output in this case uh, you don't get the na because uh, it has treated na as a string value so you didn't get that but that's fine we will we can we will handle it as we go but you get the output so these are two ways of like uh, using regex handling it i will show a lot of other ways as well now let me let me again uh, take and uh, uh, print the output if you see, if you see the output of the df cell over here i still see this less than 1 year and 10 years because whatever i did on the top i am just using it to execute an output i have not assigned it back to the uh, data frame right so that's what i'm going to do next basically uh, how to assign it to a data frame 
So if you see the employee length column, uh, uh, what I am doing is I am using a df cell dot with column. When we when I say with column, I am creating it. I want to create a new column inside the data frame df cell. So the first time I'm doing is term cleaned. The term is the other variable you saw where it has months in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a regex replace. I'm just going to do a month and then replace month with space. If you see on the top, you can see basically uh, this is the uh, this is the term. The term is 36 months and uh, 60 months are the two terms. Uh, so I'm giving months column and doing it. I am adding a second column to it. The new column I'm keeping the name as term cleaned. I am not replacing the existing column. Term cleaned and second column I'm having is employment length cleaned. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the employment length column and using the digits only and kind of running it and again assigning it back to the df underscore cell. So let me quickly run this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to from the df dot underscore cell, I'm going to select the term the column, the term clean column, 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 the employment length and employment length clean column, clean column uh, to, to see the difference. Now it is because I created with column, these columns are now part of the df underscore select data frame. You can see basically these two columns are now cleaned and available, right? Now this, now let me go and uh, print the schema. The schema is going to be still the same even though it's numeric because uh, the schema is already defined. If you want to now create something new, we have to redefine the schema. So that's why if you see over here the last two column term cleaned and employment clean, even though it does not have string, it is still string. All right. So we have, we have to manually convert the data type. Now, uh, what I what I can do is like I can create one more table right now. I have done some cleaning Think like you're doing a lot of cleaning and you want to persist the intermediate results so that you can fire some SQL query. So in this case, I'm creating one more table loan status underscore SCL and I here I am assigning a DF underscore cell. Now my DF underscore cell has two cleaned columns as well. And then I'm creating a temporary view. So let me quickly run this. And uh, if you run this, basically, you will see the output with the two new columns. So the, the thing is like, as you are doing a lot of analysis, if it's a very large data set, you want to frequently uh, maybe store the intermediate results. And you can also create a permanent table over here. I'm creating a temporary table. The temporary table is available only for this session, uh, but you can create a permanent table as well. I will show as we go into the detail of it. So if you, if you kind of see here, okay. The output, basically the last two columns over here uh, is uh, added the term cleaned and employment and uh, cleaned over here. All right. Now, next is what I want to do is I want to quickly uh, run the uh, basically quickly uh, run uh, uh, the correlation uh, matrix right and the covariance matrix so in df cell dot star in the, in the data frame there's a stat function which shows the covariance so i'm taking the covariance of annual income and loan amount i want to see how much they are correlated right now we know like it's a large number and that's not an ideal measure it just shows uh, some direction but it does not give you correlation is a good matrix we show between negative one to one negative the more it's towards the negative one it's negatively correlated the more it's towards the positive one it's positively correlated if it's close to zero then it's kind of there's not a lot of correlation right in this case it's 0.20 uh, so it's 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 not there's no lot of correlation in this case uh, but if you want to kind of run some uh, correlation or something like that you can directly use variables and run it on uh, the data set in the in the next video where i'm going to talk about exploited data analysis i'm going to see like how you can run uh, how you can run correlation for multiple variables and how you can explore and view it right so this is the correlation. Now you can also run it in a SQL. Here I am using a data frame function, but if you want to run it in a SQL, what I am doing is I am taking the loan status cell and uh, running a core SQL uh, correlation in the SQL query itself. And you can see basically the loan amount on term cleaned. I guess basically around 40 percent that, that is 0 0.40. So there is some correlation again, but not a strong correlation. Right. Uh, so that is uh, thing. And now if you see the basically the column shows everything. If you want, you can just uh, add some uh, some ABC, whatever you want. You want to keep a proper name. You can keep it so that you can refer it later and run cell. You can see basically the top. You can now see a better column name. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of show you a cross tab function. 
basically there are a lot of cases where you will have two categorical data and you want to do a frequency count so that is in the df cell um, basically data frame that's again the stat uh, that's a cross tab function which you can run here i'm taking a cross tab between loan status and the grade so i'm seeing what is the loan status how the grown status behave against multiple grades the grade is as i said it's an internal assigned grade by a lending club so if you what it's going to do is it's going to give me a cross tab output here you have the loan status basically the loan is in grace period it's fully paid it's late by 31 to 120 days it's late by 16 and then against the grade uh, basically it's showing me what is the different frequency again like that too much of information we are not able to see anything now uh, as we go in you may get a better view once we clean the data once we uh, basically uh, yeah, once we kind of transform the data in a way that it can be visualized better you will get better idea but bear with me let us we go into the detail of it so one thing i am seeing is there is nulls over here right which requires cleaning you can see here there are a lot of nulls again so which requires cleaning uh, so this is cross tab function you can also run frequency so here basically what i am doing is i am asking like in the purpose and grade like what, 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 what is the purpose that uh, consumer is taking loan? What is the major purpose? So get me the frequent items and anything that is at least 30% there. So this will give me a base, uh, what is the main top purpose that customer is taking loan. Again, if you really see, it has not given me any output. It has just created a data frame. The reason is we need to execute an action command in uh, Spark. So the uh, collect is an action command that we have put here, frequency.collect. So if you really see the top purpose people apply for loan is debt consolidation. They have multiple debt they want to consolidate. Uh, they have credit card debt they want to kind of uh, close by taking a loan. Because credit card in some credit card you may pay even 20-24% interest. So if you can go to the market and get a 13% interest loan and pay off. So you can you you can defer your payment. At the same time you can make maintain your credit score. Right. And also there is an uh, frequent items, right? Uh, the, the grades, uh, the grade frequent item. The grade is basically which grade most of the loans are. If you see here, the major loans are in A grade, B grade and C grade. This is where the major loans are. So that is uh, frequency. Uh, that, that That's a frequent item function that you can use to get the uh, which are the Tommy, uh, which are the top dominant categorical classes you have in a data set. Right. Now I can also uh, run the purpose uh, I rather if I don't want to use frequent item here what I am doing is I'm just doing a group by on the data frame I can also use SQL query here I can just say like select uh, purpose comma count of star uh, from the table name uh, group by purpose right but here I am using the data frame select group by function uh, dot count and here you are seeing uh, the output the output is not ordered here so quickly I'm going to uh, just uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just doing the other same function but I'm order buying uh, order by the count column and I'm doing it descending to see the top uh, categories uh, now if you see here the major purpose is debt consolidation and credit card which was similar to what we saw in the frequent item function so there are multiple ways of doing anything uh, you can either use the inbuilt function or you can use the data frame group by function and everything but uh, that uh, basically you, you can interchangeably use to do analysis and if you want to do complex stuff uh, this may be a good method the data frame may be a good method if you just want to get simple frequent item you can use the uh, frequent items as well right so now now next what i'm going to see these are all the sql functions that are available that you can use count mean standard deviation of the population min max average there are a lot of you can go to the spark documentation you can uh, see the different functions available there are a lot of statistical functions there are a kind of a lot of aggregation functions pre built right now quickly what i want to do if you see my descriptive statistics there the contents are not so what is the 10th percentile 20th percentile 50th percentile and 90th percentile it's not shown by default if you run pandas you may get the output uh, but you are not getting it the reason is the data set over here is distributed right now if you want to get the contents you you are running on a distributed data set and it's expensive when the data set is very large so what spark provides you is something called an approximate quantile function 
where you can do a trade off on the accuracy of the contact contact against uh, against like the speed right let me give you an example so here what i am telling is my i want the 25% quantile 50% 50% percent quantile is nothing but a median and 75% and 90% and i am telling i am okay for 0.05% uh, percent error that is like it will be 95% right 0.05% error and i am using a df still stats approx quantile function uh, on the low amount column and i am giving the probabilities i want and the error so if you see the output over here i am getting uh, 25% as this and 50% 70% 90% now when i make this particular relational error uh, relative error to zero that means i am getting an exact number i don't want any error i my error should be zero so that's what i am doing so in this case i am telling it should be zero the relative error and let me run this quickly so if you see the difference over here uh here it's 8400 here 8000 13000 40000 so you can see some difference over there as i said the more you if you leave for some error but at the same time your results are faster here it took only 28.28 uh, seconds but here it's taking 83 seconds 0.83 uh, seconds so think of a large data set when you want to run the contile function in terabyte of petabyte of data set you might be increasingly sa saving um, on the performance uh, on the execution time by some uh, error in the uh, contile accuracy and some most of the time this probabilistic uh, um, probabilistic contile should uh, do for many use cases right i can also go back and say okay i want only 0.5 percent accurate the same thing i give an error as 0.5 and if you really see the numbers are way off but it took only 0.15 seconds so as you are okay with the error it may take uh, go and run faster so you there is an approximate quantile to get the quantile you can tune it whether you want performance or you want accuracy and accordingly use it now next what i am going to do is I am going to kind of count whether uh, there is any um, null or not a number in the column. So what I'm doing is I'm going to df select and I'm taking all the df select dot columns. I am basically iterating to the columns in a for loop and then I am checking against if, if it's a not a number or it's null. Right. And I am then displaying it. So let me quickly run this cell. If you see here. Uh, if you see here, like almost every data has four uh, four nulls. There are some columns which are 241, 160, and there is one column which is I uh, DTA joint, which has a lot of nulls, right? Uh, so I similarly, what I can do is I can also um, uh, let let me let me talk about the null in the next step. Before that, I want to quickly show an SQL function where you can do group by and you can uh, do all this stuff. So if you see here the loan status. You can quickly get an output. The loan status is basically uh, current, uh, fully paid, and this is the count of that, right? Most of the accounts are current. There are some late accounts. That is a null, which is four. So if you really see the four over here is matching. Maybe something is wrong with the data when it we created the CSV. That's why everything if everything is showing as null. So let me. What I can do is loan status is my kind of target column. I want to know if I am creating a predictive model out of it. I want to know whether a customer will default or not. Right. So basically loan status is my target column. So I want to drop all the rows just null with loan status this one. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a DF cell dot NA drop. Right. Uh, basically uh, not a number or a null drop. And I'm telling like drop hall and the, uh, if the loan status is basically null. That's what here I'm telling. So once I take this and uh, run the cell. It, it completed now let me go and run again the output over here and see how it looks like now if you really see that all the four uh, values that were null has gone because uh, there's some excel preparation issue or a csv file issue but still there are other columns where you can see there are null now let's quickly go and uh, uh, basically uh, what do you call it? Quickly go and analyze the other column and see like how we can fix it, how we can impute it. So basically, if you see the like record size from 416, 128, 416 has come to 412 because the four rows were dropped, right? Now let me go into uh, describing the DTI column, which has again uh, some nulls and the uh, revolve util. So where because the output uh, 
was very uh, scrambled. I am just picking these two columns which are null. So here, if you see over here, this column, both both of these are null. Now this is a string column. This does not take it as an integer. And this column is basically uh, it's an integer, but it has null. And what you can see here is, as I said, the mean was mean is 19 and standard deviation is 20. And there are a lot of data which are outlier in this. Right, there are data in 999. It can be a type error, it can be entry error, or it can be actual value as well. Right, in order for us to do an outlier treatment, we exactly need to know uh, the business case over here. And in this case, because the percentage symbol is there, it is taking this as an uh, string value. Uh, right, so that's why uh, the mean and standard deviation was not there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the revolve util column. Right, so in this case, what I'm doing is I am doing a regex replace. In this, I'm using a SQL over here. Right, so I am doing a regex replace, and wherever there is a percentage, just remove it. Right, that's what I am doing, and I am grouping by to see how it looks like. Right now, I am not doing anything on the data frame still. I am just doing an analysis now. So in this case, if you can, if you see over here, you can you can actually see uh, basically it has now because I did a seal of it. It's going to show me the nearest value, and it's showing me a lot of output. But here, if you really see that I said a value called one one two. And as you go down, you find 184 and 126. But if you see on the top, it said the max value is only 99.9. So how can that be? The reason is it is it is a string value. It is not double. And in string, basically, it just rank orders the number as a regular string. So that's why nine is greater than one, which is why 128 begins with one or 184 begins with one. So this is string. So we have to convert that into integer as well, right? Now. Uh, now I, I just want to take all the column where this revolve util is null. So I can just run a fire query and to do analysis. So it will give me an uh, uh, output uh, similar way. But with this output, if you really quickly scroll down to see you see anything with the naked eye where revolve util is null, I am not able to find, find much, much because the numbers are spread across. across. There is no pattern. Sometimes when you do analysis, you may find a pattern. Uh, but in this case, what I am going to do is I am going to uh, again use the width column and have a revolve util clean and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take only the digits out of it the same thing as I did the previously I can use a regex replace and replace the percentage sign but I'm just going to use the digits out of it and then assign it back so this is uh, the output so this is the run and now we will do a show of uh, that particular column let me run it now if you see here Okay, good. I got now the value. So you see, this is the old revolve util column. It has null, and this is a cleaned column. Now it, this has value. It shows the mean and standard deviation because I removed the uh, percentage sign. But the maximum value is still 99, right? So uh, what can be the reason again? Because we are still not converted it into an uh, double or an integer value. It is still a double value in this case because there's decimals in it. Uh, so that's why it's showing 99 over here. Now what, what I'm going I to do is. is uh, there, there are nulls as well in this, right? As we saw earlier. Yes, so let's first fix the null. So, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a function over here, here called fill average. So for this column, I, I'm going to uh, whatever column comes in, I'm going to put the average of column. Why do we need to create a function? I can directly do it. But if I have a lot of columns which are null and I want to substitute some set of columns with average, then basically I can create a function and call it. So here I'm taking a data frame object and a column name. And then here what I'm doing is I'm assigning to the rev average, calling this fill average uh, function and uh, then passing this column over here. Right. So let me uh, quickly uh, run this too. Right. So these two are run now. Now once I have got the rev average, I need to go back and then I need to I need to kind of assign it to the data frame, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, what I'm doing is from the fill average, I'm taking the first record, which will give me the average of that particular row. And I am assigning the rev average column. I am adding a column to the data set rev average and then passing that literal rev average, which is the average wherever it is, uh, wherever it's going to be uh, null, right? So let me just a minute. Okay. Uh, sorry, that, that I'm doing in the next uh, step. So here just I am just taking the output and keeping it in the DF cell and I'm assigning it rev average. But if you see here, the rev average will not get assigned. So it will just create the rev average as 43 across the column, 
right that's what it's going to do i will show the output quickly and here what i am doing is now this rev average column is created right if you see here i am using the curly's function where, where what it will do is it will take two variables if the first is non null it will take it if the first is null it will take the second variable so in this case what i am doing is i am adding a column called review to clean and i am using this function the first column is the clean data it will take all the not null values from this and wherever there is a null it will use the column rev average this is the column i have created on the top right so that's what it is so wherever there is a null it will substitute it with the average it is going to merge two columns into a single uh, column and assign it as rev util clean so that's what it does over here let me uh, go quickly to the next and now it has the output is same because again like we are not converted the value right it is still string now what now what i am doing is i am taking this column and i am casting this column to double uh, so that like it becomes double and it shows me the actual value and now let me do this because i have casted it to double now yeah now let me run this now if you see it is showing me the maximum value as 183 the reason is now it's double whereas the old string value is 99.90 right so now this column is also fixed now let's let's quickly run the output and see uh, how, how the, the nulls, nulls are now you see like the rev till uh, the rev average or column does not have null the revolution clean does not have null that is zero but there is still one column uh, which is like 237 it is a dti column Uh, which is 237 and uh, basically it has null and also the dti joint column now let's go and analyze that data so let's what i'm going to do is here i am going to take the output where dti is null now i am seeing uh, the output let me see if i'm able to find the pattern since i know the data set right let me uh, if you see here wherever this dti is null it is because it's a joint applicant wherever there's a joint applicant so it has null if you scroll down all the applicants which are called as join a joint applicant right so this well like basically a domain understanding and everything come into play uh, when you're cleaning the data you also need to understand uh, how this data behaves with other data for you to clean properly otherwise if you are going to substitute just average then it's not going to work so let me narrow down and uh, select three columns from this study or table application type dti and dti join so wherever the Uh, application is joint type dti is null but dti joint is other variable where it has called calculate the debt to income ratio so that's why dti is null now what we are going to do is we are going to merge these two columns into a single column so that's what we are done is i am again creating a with column new column dti clean and then i am taking the uh, same callis function where i am passing column dti wherever column dti is null i am telling you use column dti joint so this is going to merge the two columns into one column called dti underscore uh, clean now let me run the output and uh, let's quickly watch uh, the result so now if you see the dti clean is the last column i get zero nulls the others are there because what i'm doing is i'm not replacing the original column i am just recreating a new column which is my cleaned variable now my data set is completely clean the 111630 is from the dti joint right we are not going to use it because i have a dti cleaned column the 150 is from dti i am not going to use it so now we have this particular output we have a clean data frame now now what other things i can do is i can just do a quick uh, group by on the loan status and i can get a count right now you are seeing this one there are too many output one is fully paid is loan is already paid but the in grace period charged off late and uh, late 31 to 120 days late 160 days are like same uh, it is telling that the customer loan is getting bad right so i may want to basically go and merge these into uh, into like single function so what i am doing over here is that's what uh, i am doing over here i am doing like an uh, the df cell i am using a var condition and i am telling where loan status is in this 31 to 120 days charged off in grace period or this thing i am just uh, yeah i am just like printing the output over here right so var condition the data frame var condition you can use uh, search conditions and you can query the data right so it it gives me an output but i'm going to go further one step and uh, what i'm going to do is i am telling add a new column called var loan and when when this particular loan status is this value then put yes otherwise put no 
so the loan is current or fully paid you are putting no otherwise if it's all this late it's uh, printing yes right so now i am de dealing only with two output whether the loan is good or bad so let me take this bad loan variable and run it now and you can see from five or six variables right now what i am getting is uh, basically i am getting only there's a no which is majority of the loan are good loan and there's a yes which is 1828 right i can also do and uh, filter it out if here what i am doing just to show some data frame function for data analysis i am just i can filter it out say and only show me where the bad loan is yes so it's going to uh, show output over here and you can see wherever there's a bad loan basically the interest rates are pretty high right may 35% interest uh, if somebody is paying a 35% interest loan uh, definitely like the chances of that being uh, that loan being risky is pretty high right similarly i can i'm going to finally print the schema because we added lot of columns uh, to it uh, you if you see over here the last columns are cleaned columns i ordered i added a term cleaned i added employment uh, employee length cleaned review till clean and then dti cleaned and the bad loan column right and then what i'm going to do I, i the some of the columns i have already transformed and cleaned it so i need to drop i am going to drop it from a data frame so what i could do is i am creating one more final data frame object i am telling the df cell dot drop 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 these three columns i don't need it because i have transformed and uh, cleaned that particular uh, data frame right and then uh, once it is done i am just using that uh, df cell final dot print schema which will not have the drop date column and only have the other columns now i can go and do a cross tab earlier when i did a cross tab on loan status and grade it showed me lot of output i was not able to interpret it but now i have only two variables yes and no and here if you really see the loan grade basically when it's a most of the the it's 184 that is if you do a rough calculation it is around 0.2% uh, but as the grade increases if you see like grade e for 5712 loan it's 250 that is around close to 5% right and as you go further the the default the bad loan increases so basically what it means is the grade a grade is a better grade a uh, borrower but as the loan goes down uh, the borrower grade uh, is pretty risky that's why they assign different grade right and similarly uh, i can uh, quickly describe the uh, dti cleaned variable now if you see the dti cleaned variable i have 999 which i said which has lot of outliers now i can do a outlier treatment but i want to understand what exactly it is for me if you see really the debt to income ratio if somebody has a debt of 100 dollars and if his income is 100 dollars uh, then basically it's 100 uh, the debt to income ratio is uh, 100% right now it's kind of a risky for me i don't want to give anybody loan which is more than 40% uh, because they are more probable to pay that's what typically a bank does but uh, some but this kind of platform take risk as well so i can filter out and select all the low grade which are greater than 100 right uh, if yeah maybe that can be data issue or something like that i can work with the business and solve it uh, i can do further analysis of it but now what i'm going to do is i have done all my analysis i have done all my data cleaning finally i am going to store it in a permanent table right if you that see that's how a typical data as work you take your data you collect your data you do your analysis you clean the data and then store the data so in this case now i am creating a permanent table name i am not creating a temporary table permanent table will exist even after the session is closed temporary table will exist only for this particular uh, session what i am doing is i am doing a df cell uh, dot write format i am giving a parquet format you can give any format that you want uh, which you prefer uh, a parquet format also has some compression to add some compress to emission to it and it's a columnar uh, data uh, data store so i am giving a parquet and i'm telling like save as table so this particular output will be saved as permanent table now what we are going to do in the okay it's already exists so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, put loan data lc loan data one i think i have already created this table so now it has executed it and and i will quickly query this to see um, the output loan data one in this case because that's the name i gave so yeah so, so the, you can, can see the output, the output. Uh, uh over here whatever uh, the, the output, output is basically uh, that it's now persisted in the system in a parquet format 
now what i'm going to basically do in the next video is take this now we have cleaned the data right we had done some analysis on the data and the uh, result of the analysis was the data cleaning we did now we are going in the next take the source to save data and i'm going to do uh, some exploratory data analysis on this data and uh, we will uh, catch up in the next video uh but till then like uh, try try to practice this uh, if you get time uh, so that like you get to know the functions more and more uh, thank you